Boujou, Kinemagi and Nene Ireland Adishnikas, and welcome to today's science lesson. Today's episode, severe weather. Doesn't snow enough for recess, or if it, or if snow enough to get a day off, or if it rains during recess, or if it's hot or cold, we have a lot of things we can complain about. Sometimes we know what's coming. Other times we're not prepared. Today's video is to discuss weather and severe weather, and just to give you a little bit of basic knowledge today. One of the websites I use a lot is NOAA.gov. It's from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And there's a spot in there where I can type the current location. And as I record this on a Sunday afternoon, it was 66 degrees in Mount Pleasant. I can click right here to see the full forecast. And I'm going to do that for you. And that brings up a number of things. First, we have, we have a visual of what's gonna be happening weather-wise. It's going to be a beautiful day for our Monday school, it looks like, and Tuesday as well. Wednesday, a chance of showers. But it's definitely going to be warmer than it has been, so maybe, just maybe, we put the snow boots away. Then you get a detailed forecast. Images, satellite images. Visuals, like I can click on this graph, and I can find that there's a chance of showers today, but not a very strong chance, like 12%. So it's probably not going to rain much, if at all. But this can this is a graph will allow me to say, oh, here's when I should be looking out, particularly if it's more of a severe time. But there are some other things here, like a forecast discussion. So I could click on that. And I could actually read what the weather people are saying. And this is something that if you're interested in and want to click on, you can learn about the words here and, and what they mean. And eventually you could look at this and kind of make your own forecast. Something I may or may not do occasionally. Then we have the hazard, hazardous weather outlook. That's a more important thing. This will tell the public and more specifically meteorologists, whether we should be looking out for anything, whether it be snow or severe thunderstorms. And in this episode, we're focused more on the warm weather issues as we're trying to forget winter existed for a little while until we get into the fall and then we'll worry about that. But I can see that Monday through Saturday could be some thunderstorms late week but it doesn't mean that it's going to be severe. In fact, they suggest that spotter activation will not be needed. Say you're really interested in a visual of whether severe weather is going to happen. And this source is called the Storm Prediction Center. It's sbc.noaa.gov. And I can see in here, and this is a convention, that there's at least a slight chance for severe weather in North North Texas, going into New Mexico, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado. And there are discussions here about whether they should be. You can see there are some severe thunderstorm watches. And you can see this is day one. Let's say I want to see day two. I can click here. And now day two, you can see there's a pretty decent chance of thunderstorms in Texas. If I was in Texas, I'd have my eyes open. Anywhere in the light green, you might get a thunderstorm, but probably nothing severe. Although an occasional severe one can pop up. In the marginal area, the green, the darker green, that's an area that you might see some disorganized um, severe weather, but you might get more than one or two storms, but it probably won't be uh of the biggest of the and the worst you get into the yellow now you're getting that slight chance and you could be looking at and you want to keep your eyes open when you're in the yellow um, this could be organized when you get into the enhanced um you definitely want to keep an eye out 
Um, tornadoes frequently are not out of the question or major hail. And then if you happen to get to moderate or high, you really want to make sure that your daily plans include um, an exit strategy so that you're not, you don't, you might not want to go and walk in the woods for four or five hours on those kind of days because you might not have time to find a safe spot. One of the things that's is, that's offered through our local National Weather Service and the National Weather Service divides up our country into a large number of pieces. And in Michigan, we have the Pontiac or White Lake office. We have the Grand Rapids office. We have an office near Gaylord and an office in Marquette that will be in charge of the forecasts. Being we're here in Mount Pleasant, we might sometimes wanna look at what the weather forecast says for Midland because they're not always gonna be 100% in agreement or even looking at what it says in Gaylord because in just a few miles north and east, you're gonna be in a different forecast area. So we're kind of on the edge. Hazardous weather and staying safe. Um, watches can often be issued up to six hours before storms are expected. That's just the keep your eyes open. Warnings can be issued for a 10 to 60 minute window when strong storms are imminent. That doesn't mean that the storms are happening yet, but that they are likely to in a short period of time. The greatest threat that Michigan is usually severe thunderstorms, and those can be straight light winds over 60 miles an hour, large hail, flooding, lightning, tornadoes. And by the way, or lightning does not constitute severe weather, even if it were to just be going and going and going and going. Um, by definition, that does not make the storm severe. Um, our biggest issue in Michigan tends to be straight line winds. Um, I can remember some significant storms where winds were blowing 80 or 100 miles an hour straight forward, but there's no rotation like in a tornado. But that doesn't mean that um, a 90 mile an hour wind in a straight line is no less dangerous than a 90 mile an hour wind in a tornado. Michigan averages about 15 tornadoes a year, um, usually from April to September. Now, though I do recall myself, some happening is in November and February. Um, they can be at day or night, <clears throat> but quite often if it's in the summer, uh, you're going to tend to find them in the afternoon because the daytime heating will actually make the atmosphere less stable. And a tornado warning can be from Doppler radar or when a reliable tornado report is received. Uh, I can recall many years ago calling the National Weather Service and telling them what I saw and having the weather assume a tornado warning. Uh, they depend a lot on spotters, especially out further away from Grand Rapids or any of our other posts. And this documentation comes from the Detroit Pontiac office. Uh, because that's where I took the weather spotter class this year. Um, and it talks about being prepared. You your family and home should have a plan, just like we do at school, of where you would go um, and what to do, because you don't want to have to do that on the fly. Where to seek shelter from a tornado, lowest level of the building. Uh, basements are quite common. Uh, but an interior room in the house is also acceptable in most cases as well. Avoid windows and exterior walls. And the reason to avoid windows is while well, glass is dangerous and glass can break in a tornado. Uh, get under something sturdy like a desk or stairwell. I mean, that's just in case something, you know, if there is significant damage, you want something to protect you. Pillows, blankets, and clothing can shelter yourself from debris like glass. Um, if you're driving or in a mobile home, sturdy building, um, do not attempt to outrun a tornado. They can move pretty fast. Um, if you can't not if you can't make it, stay in the car with the seat belt on. Put your head down below the windows, covering with your hands and blanket if possible. And if you can safely get noticeably lower than the level of the roadway, exit your car and lie in that area. Um, Although I don't always recommend lying in a ditch because sometimes flooding can be an issue too. 
Um, flooding is another major issue. Don't drive through it. Um, it only takes a couple inches of water to knock over a full grown adult. Um, and a car can float in one to two feet of water. Yikes. Definitely, they, the phrase is turn around, don't drown. Lightning, you know, it'll stand outside doing Ben Franklin stuff. Um, it's never safe. Um, and you want to find a spot that is. And in winter weather, we'll talk about it another time. Now, there are some different types of clouds that we look at in the sky um, and that you might find interesting. And the first one is a shelf versus a wall cloud. You know, they're not going against each other, but just telling the difference. Here's meteorologist Rachel Garceau with your Idaho News 6 forecast. 617 on our Thursday, of course, talk of the town yesterday. Still talk of the town today because I am still talking about it. Where the storms are rolled through in such dramatic fashion yesterday, late afternoon. We did see lightning, most of it intra cloud or cloud to cloud lightning, not the lightning that comes straight down to the ground. Looks almost vertical or horizontal, I should say. And you can see a great picture here from Aaron Westfall as well. The purple clouds, you see the lightning just above the trees um, within that same cloud and of course the big story for everyone was this dramatic cloud formation that rolled through. We're actually seeing two different cloud formations in this picture from Jeff, a shelf cloud and a wall cloud. That's what we're seeing here as well. Just some beautiful photos from everyone out there. Thank you so much. This is from Gina Middleton for sharing that. I thought we'd touch on briefly the difference between a shelf cloud and a wall cloud because they are different, but it's easy to confuse the two, especially because the term seems so interchangeable. So shelf clouds are typically associated with a solid line of storm. The wind will come out first from a shelf cloud, followed by rain. That's exactly what we saw last night. Wall clouds tend to be smaller, more compact. They maybe look like they're emerging or hanging from the base of a bigger cloud. Those are the ones we watch real closely because they can rotate on a vertical axis, which can eventually form a funnel cloud, which can eventually form a tornado, right? So here's a picture of a wall cloud down here on the base. This is that wall cloud almost looks like a wall uh, kind of straight descending from the bottom of that cloud. Look at this great picture from yesterday. This was in the Treasure Valley taken by Bandy. Here's that amazing shelf cloud really dramatic underneath it. We are seeing those wall clouds there and again shelf clouds tend to spin on the horizontal and wall clouds on the vertical. That's why we watch them so closely. So that's mm -hmm. and now I Funnel cloud and a tornado. A funnel cloud can turn into a tornado, but a funnel cloud by itself is not a tornado. Confused yet? Well, the explanation is more simple than you might think. Funnel clouds like the ones spotted in Aurora and Elizabeth today are not tornadoes because they didn't reach the ground. They just snaked through the air before disappearing. A tornado, on the other hand, is a funnel cloud that touches the ground, like the one that hit Thornton 38 years ago today. One of the most destructive to hit the metro area. Now, in the last two weeks, the Weather Service has received 21 reports of tornadoes across our state. All of them reported last Sunday and Monday. Now, one other thing to mention, land spouts. The Weather Service highlighted a land spout risk area east of Denver this afternoon. A bit unusual. Land spouts are tornadoes, kind of like glorified dust devils. They're very weak, and one popped up today near Sterling Reservoir. Now, if you need a clearer picture, just think, Water spouts over land. So a few references to finish this off. If you are a weather spotter, it just tells you what to look for. And we're not so worried about that at the moment. But wind scale, and this is where we talk about 25 mile an hour winds could do some blow some things around, but it's not doing a lot of damage. Uh, you start getting into the 40 mile an hour range, you're going to start seeing small sticks break off, and, but still not a huge amount of damage. Start getting over 55 miles an hour, and then we start seeing um, trees getting blown over, particularly ones in um, overly moist soil or not very deep soil, uh, damage to chimneys and TV antennas. Um, start getting over 73 miles an hour, you could start seeing roof a roof's being blown off, windows broken, um, and some sig significant damage. Um, keep in mind that this is hurricane strength, essentially. And over 113 miles an hour, um, you can have some really, really significant um, 
situations. And if you notice that after 55 miles an hour, that is reaching severe warning criteria. 53 mile an hour winds is not a severe thunderstorm. 55, yes. Hail, as we look at it, small hail doesn't automatically create a, can constitute a severe thunderstorm. Um, but you start seeing quarter size hail, which is about an inch in diameter. So if you look at it quarter before you spend it, that's the sign of a severe wet storm. And if you picture having one of those dropped on you, it probably wouldn't feel good. Um, and you get these things up here, um, those can those could kill a person if they hit you in the head very easily and do immense amounts of damage. Um, And these are some examples, some of the other things they don't mind you reporting if you're a trained weather spotter. Hopefully that little bit of info on severe weather might pique an interest. If you want more information, please reach out to me at mirlimitsideshipschool.net. Otherwise, have a minogizhigad, minwab, bumapee.